How's it going out there? Welcome from H2 Tech Videos. Today I'm going to be going over the Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 for Beginners Part 3. In this Part 3 I'm going to be going over uh, 10 uh, must-have apps. These are going to be great apps that are going to allow you to enjoy your tablet more, going to allow you to take advantage of more of the features. Um, and they're my favorite apps, so I use them on all my devices as well. So I wanted to share them with you just so maybe looking for some app recommendations. Well, this is it. So, first app we're going to go over is an app called Google Keep. And Google Keep connects right with your Gmail. So, it allows you to take quick notes, uh, make a little list. You can even send reminders about those lists or certain things. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's open it up here. And so, at the top here is like your, your little shortcut or this is kind of how you pick, you know, what kind of list you want to make. So this is just like a paragraph type list. This is like a checklist. Um, this is a voice list so you can actually tap that microphone there. And you can actually begin to speak what you want to say in the note and it will record your voice. And as you can see it's very accurate and it actually also keeps a voice record of what you said, so I could play it back. So you could actually make a voice memo and it will transcribe it for you as well. So um, that's a really awesome feature. You're not gonna find a lot of note apps that do that. So that's really awesome. You also have uh, a camera option here. You can actually take pictures, you can add them into a note. So let me just show you a quick, just a basic note. Um, I'm just going to tap the little paragraph right here. And I might say, um, I don't know, good quote. Or good quite, I guess you say. And then, um, so a couple things I can do with it. I can change the color of the note so it stands out. So I can make it like an orange. I can take a picture. So maybe you want to like have a picture to go with your note. So I'm going to tap take photo. And now we're on the picture screen and I'm going to go thumbs up. So there's our picture. And then it will ask you if you like the picture and you want to use it. I'm going to hit save. And then it will add the picture right into the note as well. So there's our picture right with the note. And then we have an option down here to set a reminder. So if you were to make a note, I don't know, go to the dry cleaner or um, make sure when I get home to do A, B, and C, you could hit time reminder. And then what time reminder will do is you can say, okay, tomorrow at this time or this date, remind me, and a little notification will pop up and it'll bring you back to that note. Another cool feature is there's a location reminder as well. So you can actually say, okay, when I get to this place, remind me. So now this is something you'd have to keep like the GPS feature on, but you can literally set it so that when you get to your home address, this note will automatically pop up and say, hey, remember you gotta do A, B, and C. So it's a really cool app, but it's simple. It, it doesn't do too much. So it allows you to just get in, make your quick notes, and then get out of it. So I use it for a lot of different things. There's even a share option up here where you could share that note with other apps. For example, if you wanted to share it to a Dropbox, text it to someone, if you wanted to email it, whatever, and that's kind of cool. You can take that note and then you could send it other places too. So this is um, going to be number one. This is a great app. I love it. And just one last thing. Let's say this note, I want to get rid of it. I can just swipe it away like that. And it's gone so really kind of a cool thing it lets you interact with your notes and I can go down my list here and look at different notes I've made they're color-coded so sometimes like the more important notes you know will stand out when I go through my archive here 
So that's going to be app number one. Great app. I have this over all my devices. And the probably the last, I'm sorry, I keep trying to like not miss anything. One of the most important features of it is you can actually pull it up from your computer. You can go to keep.google.com and you can look at all your notes from your PC. You can even make changes to your notes from your computer and then look at them on your tablet. So it's fully integrated with the tablet, with your phone, and with your computer. And I think that's the problem with a lot of the note apps is you make the note in one place, but you need to be able to see it in other places, and this allows you to really keep it connected and tied together. So, um, don't worry, I won't go as in depth in all of the 10 apps, but that one I really wanted to make sure I land the point on all the things you can do. The next app is going to be an app called HD Widgets, and this little header you see right here, this is HD Widgets. And what's cool about it is you have different little options of how to customize your, your clock on your home screen. So this one shows the time, it shows the weather for the next couple of days, it shows the date, and there's a lot of other options. So just to show you, if we go to apps and then we tap on widgets, we can look at all the widgets that are available with this one. So these are all different options. So there's smaller versions, there's bigger versions. The current one that's on there right now is this one right here. So you can pick a, a, a longer one or you can pick a shorter one. Whatever one works for you and it allows you to customize the colors, the fonts. You can change different things that are on there. It's, it really allows you to customize and lets you put the most important things on your home screen. Now this app is not a free app. This is actually a paid app. This app is $199, but it's a one-time price and it's definitely worth it. I would say, again, I have this on all my devices. Even for something as small as, it'll show you the high and the low of, of, of the weather. A lot of times I need to know, okay, what am I wearing today? And I open my phone up and I look at the high and I look at the low and I say, okay, cool, now I know. So, cool app there. HD widgets, definitely recommend it. I've been using it for years and I will continue to use it. The next app is going to be an app called Malto. Now they actually changed the name. This app used to be called Incredimail and they just changed the name. I don't know why, maybe somebody bought it. But this is a great mail app and it's, it's probably one of the funnest and coolest mail apps I've ever seen. Let's go ahead and open it up and I'll give you a quick tour of it. Let me actually set it up really quick. Just to walk you through the setup process, actually. So I'm going to sync my AOL. And give me one sec. Okay, so I just uh, added my account, and all I did was put in my email address and password. And so one of the cool thing is, uh, aside from looking at your different emails, you can actually look at your Facebook. You can actually connect it to be able to look at uh, Facebook information so if you want to see like friends updates things like that you can connect that I'm not going to do that this time you have uh, some cool options where you can scroll through emails without taking up the whole page and I'm going to show you all that once we get to the actual app here um, so there's that there's that let's just get right to the app so this is an email app once again and the benefit of it is it lets you look at your emails in a non-traditional way you're not looking at emails going up and down you're looking at emails kind of like um what you call flipboard i don't know if you guys are familiar with uh flipboard but um it basically organizes the emails a little bit different so the way you look at them is uh, is funner and like for example this email down here for catalog spree so right now I can only read the first half of the email but I can go ahead and just swipe up and I can continue to read the email without it actually taking over the whole page and the benefit of that is it just allows me to see so much more at one time right now it's updating so it'll get a couple more emails in there and then we can really get a full sense of what it looks like it's only showing us like two or three emails here. And let's see. Latest yesterday. Let's go up in our settings here. You can also sync multiple accounts so you can have more than one emails coming through here at one time. You might have five email accounts. You can look at all those through here. I even have folders that are connected with my email as well. I can look at all my folders too. If 
I really just need it to update. But uh, anyway, it's it's fine because what what ends up happening is it's gonna pull all your emails, but this is how you see them. So instead of just seeing a list of one after another, you get little previews of all these different emails. So like I get a quick you know name there. There we go. Now it's starting to flow, and the emails are starting to pop in here. So like right now I can say, okay, I don't care about this Hyundai one. I don't care about this cruise. That's junk. That's junk. That's junk. You know, so it allows you to look through your email a lot faster without having to read each one to see how important it is. And one of the other features I love so awesome is being able to we can hit our menu button, which is uh, currently right here. So hit menu and we want to tap on edit and when we do that we can begin to check emails that we want to delete so i can go ahead and say okay honda i don't care insurance catalog spree this this um uh, there there that one i want to delete that one and that one and let's look at the first page that one that one and that one and now I'm gonna hit the trash can and I'm gonna delete so I've been over to email uh, excuse me delete about 10 or 12 emails really quickly just by saying hey this is junk so I don't have to worry about reading that and then the ones I do want to read I can just swipe through like this without having to open them up and take up the whole page and I can go ahead and read them so this is a great app when it comes to um, being able to look at your emails in a non-traditional way, being able to delete faster, being able to read them quicker, and just really get through get through the emails because email has be, kind of become a tedious thing where like it just kind of sucks because you know you're getting so much junk mail in the mix of your important email. You also have some quick options to search here. You can tap the plus here to create a new email and send an email. So. Uh, I really think you guys will enjoy this. This is a free app. Again, it's called Malto, and it's a non-traditional email app. Now, if you are not too fond of it and just want to do email the traditional way, you would look for the email app like this. Where you can go to your app section and go to apps. And then right under email, tap email. And then you can just put in your email address and password. You can use this email app as well. This is the stock one that comes with your Galaxy Tab 3. Uh, I prefer the Malto one. It's a little bit funner. Again, you've seen it. So um, take your pick on which one you think you'll like better. Next thing here is an app called Cal. And what's funny, I didn't notice it right away, but this is a calendar app that looks very similar to Apple's new calendar app, the one they added to iOS 7. And um, to me, it actually works really great on Android. Um, so this app, let's see here, uh, has a nice feng shui. It's a nice look in terms of being able to look at the different weeks. Um, if you want to look at the month, you just swipe down from the top here. So there's our calendar view of the month. You can tap on all the different days and see if you have something planned for that day. There we go. If you want to add a new appointment, you can hit the plus in the upper right corner like that. And that will let you add a new uh, event. So this is a, you know, kind of a funner email app than the, the, the uh, stock Android one, which is S Planner. I'm, I don't like it that much that's why i use that one so i would probably replace s planner with cal because i think it's funner it is also free it'll sync right with your uh gmail calendar or any other your any of your other email calendars and allow you to see all your events and there's also a cool widget for it if we go to widgets and we go to cal there is a widget you can put on your home screen Let's hold down on it and we just drag it just like that. And then we can even make it bigger if we want. But there's a cool little widget, you know, that we can put on our home screen as well. And then you have the plus here if you need to add events 
on the fly. So this is a great app. Definitely encourage you to download it. Uh, it's really fun, and it's one of the newer, uh, e uh, excuse me, newer calendar apps I'm using now. I'm big on calendars because I'm really organized in terms of punching in events and making sure I'm scheduled and organized. So I always love a good calendar app. The next app I want to show you is an app called Voice Search, and this app actually comes on your tablet, but you may not have known what it was. If you go to apps and apps. You will have a little red microphone called Voice Search. This app is awesome because it is so accurate, it's crazy, and you can ask it to do really practical things. Like I use it for a very specific purpose, or a couple, and one of them is this. Set alarm for 7.30 a.m. tomorrow. See that? It got it perfectly. And now it's going to say setting alarm. I think you, you do have to turn in. We have to turn on this feature here. Opt into Google now. But after that, you're set. And so you can ask it to do different things with your tablet. And it'll make notes of that stuff. So again, you could just be on your tablet. And you're like, oh, I got to make sure I do this. Set timer for 30 minutes. You know, maybe you're cooking and you, you want to make sure that you're you're keeping an eye on your turkey. You see that? And that's it. And once it runs across, it sets it, you're done. So it's just, you know, man, I, I really love Google's voice search. It's better than S Voice, which is what comes on the uh, tab three. Because this one really is, is so accurate to your voice. I mean, it doesn't get it right 100% of the time, but it's pretty darn close. Okay? So, this is a great app. You can do other things like score of the Lakers game. So, even little things like that, you know, you know sports scores, things like that. Um... Usually it'll like pull up the game for you and tell you like what the final score was. The lost to the Bulls, 92 to 86. They are playing the Jazz tomorrow at 7:30 p.m. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Exactly what you needed. Ask it, and there it is. So this is a such an amazing app, and I have it on my phone, and I just love that it's accurate. That's the biggest thing. You just want to be able to speak into it and. Not have to keep changing words. So this is a great app. Definitely encourage you to use it. It's fun. It works. It just makes your life easier. Some nights I'm like about to pass out and I just need to make sure I set that alarm. And that's what I use. So definitely download voice search. The next app is an app called mint.com. And this is a great app for keeping track of your, your bank accounts, credit card accounts, different things like that. Um, you basically put in your account information and then it, it lets you look at all your balances, all your transactions, see what, what transactions have clear, what's pending. Um, such an awesome app. Uh, even just quick story, someone had gotten one of my credit cards for identity theft and the only reason I caught it was because of this app. So I want to give you a quick look of what the screens look like. Um, Again, it allows you to look at your accounts. It lets you see what you're spending on gas, expenses, blah, blah, blah. So it breaks everything down into different categories. You can set your own categories. You can see, you know, maybe you spent a little bit more this month on something than you did last month. It even lets you know when your credit card bills are due. What's that? It lets you set budgets. You can say, okay, I only want to spend 250 on gas, this much on, on food. So it really shows you all the goals that you've set and how good or bad you've done at sticking to it. It shows you the, the breakdown over a couple months. What months are you spending more or less? It's a very extensive app, and I just I love it so much because it just really allows you to keep track of everything, even your investments, your retirement accounts, all that stuff. And it's a free app; you don't even have to pay for it. Download it free. You can go on Mint.com, the website, and put in your information because it's a little bit faster that way. And then you open it up in the morning. I usually open it up. It updates, lets me know my balances, lets me know how everything is going. You know, it's just a great complement to um, being able to keep track of your finances and make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be.
The next thing, next app we're gonna go over, this is gonna be number seven, which is an app called Switcher. And with Switcher, uh, you can set these little hot cues on the screen. So any one of the corners I have mine set right here, and you can actually switch between apps that are currently open. So watch this. All I do is drag my finger across. Oh, it was actually opening up the app. But let me actually let's turn off this stupid rotation thing because that's getting annoying. So part tab with there. And my hot cue is set for this this side of the screen. So all I do is just slide my finger from the edge onto the screen. And then I can basically go through any one of the most recent apps I've used. So I can quickly just get right to it. So let's say I want to go to calendar. Okay, cool. Let's go to calendar. And it opens up calendar. I might be in calendar and say now I want to go to um, the Play Store. There it is. It allows you to switch, basically multitask between different apps without having to close one app, go to the home screen, then go to the next app. Um, it's a great app. It is free. There is a paid version that gives you more functionality, um, but I just love it. I think it just makes it so much easier. If you think about it, when you're holding your tablet like this, and you keep having to reach down to the home button, it gets a little annoying. So now, if you're holding it, you can just swipe and say, okay, cool, now I wanna to go to my S Planner. And there we go. Now we're on S Planner, cool. Okay, now I need to go back to my calendar, my other calendar, whatever. And there it is, you see? So it, it allows you to switch between different apps without having to go home and go to the app store. It's basically whatever app you already have open, it lets you switch between those apps. So, and it's, it's spelled Switcher, but there's no E. So it's just H uh, and then R. The next thing is, is uh, Chrome, which is an app that comes on the Tab 3 already. But I recommend you use this over the internet browser because with Chrome, there's some, some added benefits that you do get. So let's open it up here. So, Chrome is a great browser. One of the best things about it is for you guys who use uh, Gmail, or you have a Gmail because you have to have a Gmail to use a tablet, but um, if you use Chrome on your computer, you could actually pull up websites that you looked at on the computer. You can, you can switch right to them from the tablet. What are you talking about? Well, at the bottom here, you have a tab that's called Other Devices. So I can tap on Other Devices and I can look at what tabs do I have open on my home computer? Which tabs do I have open on my other laptop? What tabs do I have open on my cell phone? Because I use Chrome on all those different devices. So the benefit is I can easily switch um, to those different things, those different web pages, you know, between devices. So that's that's probably one of the biggest benefits. It's also a really smooth web browser. So just go to my website real quick, extratechvideos.com. So I can get to my website nice and quick. You even have something very unique which you don't see in a lot of all the other browsers, which is you have a microphone up here. So you can actually tap and you can do a voice search on something, a quick voice search right from just tap in the microphone too. So, and then if you want to set a website as a favorite, all you do is tap that star right there and then it'll favorite that website. I think my internet's running a bit slow right now. That's why it's kind of tripping like that. But normally it would just pull up the website nice and quick. So, uh, definitely recommend you use Chrome as your browser. Um, the internet one isn't bad, the one down here, but Chrome is going to work a little bit better and it's a little bit easier to use, so, you know. The next thing is an app called SwiftKey. If you're not a big fan of the stock keyboard that does come with um, the Tab 3, then you may want to switch to SwiftKey. I'm going to show you real fast the keyboard on the Tab 3 and then I want to show you... Uh oh Freezing up there a little bit. So let's uh, clear some RAM real quick. 
on a memento. Okay, there we go. Okay, so RAM manager clear. Okay, so now we're good. And we're going to go to Swift Key. And actually, before that, let's see, let's accept. Before that, I just want to show you, even though you've already seen it, but just to, for anyway, just show you this is the. This is the keyboard which you've seen on your device so you know it has a certain layout now I'm going to install the Swift key keyboard really quickly here and so I can show you the difference so Swift key is 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 a more how do you say it I feel like it's a little bit more of an intuitive keyboard allows you to type a lot faster and a lot smoother um, it even is it works a little bit better in terms of making predictions on the words you use more so like this is the new keyboard right here okay so nice and quick got most of the words right and then you can customize it so you can actually hold or just tap the swift key icon which is right here and then go to themes and we will just tap under themes right here and we'll have this list of options to pick from so we could pick like the all white keyboard and see that so that one's got a nice little look to it we can also pick a keyboard that has a little more color in it which is the red I don't know maybe you're a red fan and then you got an all red keyboard so this allows you to customize your keyboard and you know it's gonna make it a lot more comfortable for you to type because this keyboard is just a little bit more intuitive and notice the keys are a little bit thicker than the Samsung keys so all that's gonna make a difference in terms of your typing and trying to type a little bit faster and more uh, accurately so this is gonna be number nine on our list great app Swift key um, most of my devices I do switch the keyboard because the app just works better but thank you guys for watching and this has been the Galaxy Tab 3 for Beginners Part 3. There is a Part 4 coming as well. We're going to go into a couple more things on the tablet. Definitely want to show you guys all the things that are possible and so you can enjoy your tablet and have fun with it and take advantage. It does so many things and so that's why it takes so many videos to really go over all the features. So, hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share the video as well. Subscribe to HD Tech Videos and like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Tech Videos. Take care and have a good one.